What's going on you guys and welcome back to the Avery Show. So Apple had an event a few days ago where they basically just wanted to talk about a bunch of different products they're planning to soon put on the market for everyone to be able to buy. So that's things like the new iPhone, iPhone 13 Pro, that new watch, iPad mini and so on. But we're not a review channel, so we're not going to be reviewing every single one of the products. We are an investing channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about how this event can help or hurt the Apple stock. And also we're going to be talking about a few of the other things that Apple has in their plans and things that might come out in the future, which could hurt or help Apple stock. So if you guys want to see my opinions and my thoughts, then stay tuned and cue that intro. To start off the video, we're going to start on a negative note. So we're going to be looking at some negative sentiment articles related to this event for Apple. And by the way, all the articles and links that I use will be available in the description just in case you guys want to check it out for yourself. So anyways, let's take a look at the title of this article. So what he has written is the law of diminishing returns is coming for Apple. So essentially, he believes that Apple is no longer going to be the growth behemoth it once was, and it's going to start to not grow as much as it used to be, which is definitely a fair point. But unfortunately, to be honest, I think that's a very common sense point. If we take a look at the four stages of the business life cycle, which you can see over here. So of course, there's an the introduction stage. So this is back in the day when Apple was coming out from the garage or wherever it started. Then there's the growth stage and the maturity stage. So right now, this author believes that Apple is right over here where they're basically going to start getting diminishing returns and they're getting close to the decline stage. So whether or not they're here or here is really up for debate. This person in particular is kind of reacting to the new iPhone event where they talking about all the different products which yeah i guess it's fair but apple is no longer just an iphone company or a accessory company they have so much more to offer and we'll get into that more later on in the video but in my humble opinion i think that apple is still over here yeah they might be over here for their new iphones because this new phone didn't really have so many other features but to be honest, they have so much more potential elsewhere. So just to reiterate, yeah, of course, the iPhone product could be coming closer to that decline stage. But to be honest, there could be a life cycle extension where they're creating more and more innovative ways to build on their iPhone product. For example, you, that iOS is a huge core competency of the iPhone product. They are constantly evolving it, making your life easier through different type of applications, mobile wallet, maps music and so on they're building this giant ecosystem so that could really build on the life cycle extension or it could decline nobody really knows at this point but either way my main point and takeaway is apple is not just an iphone or products or accessory company they have so much more to offer now and that's exactly why I still think Apple is at the early stages of the growth stage. And another thing to look at is this article over here, Apple overvalued after lackluster event. And I think people are really taking this event too far in terms of valuing this company. Again, Apple is more than just a phone company. So let's take a look at some of the key points that this article has. So what this author has written is Apple has become accustomed to pushing minor upgrades on its loyal customer base and raking in the upgrade cash. I mean, yeah, that's definitely a fair point. There's going to be a bunch of people every single year getting the new products over and over again. There's also going to be people that wait two to three years that also upgrade the products. Personally, I'm an iPhone user. I use Apple products all the time and I get new phones every two to three, sometimes four years. But yeah. I'm that loyal customer so i can kind of see it but at the same time they're kind of using this as a diss and to be honest i mean if they're getting people to come back they have a loyal customer base people are getting sucked into the ecosystem and that's what this article really doesn't talk about is how once somebody's in the apple ecosystem it's extremely hard to get out of it just for example you have your iphone and then you have your notes locked where you keep all your passwords and whatnot and then those passwords are linked to things on your computer which is also an apple product and then you can share things from here to there you have all your i messages you have your music you have apple tv and then let's just say you want to switch one day how hard would it be or how easy would it be to switch over it wouldn't be easy at all it would be extremely difficult and this is exactly why apple's ecosystem is insanely crazy it's almost like a subscription service where basically over time yes of course the loyal customers will buy products all the time but even the customers that aren't super loyal 
but are in the Apple ecosystem will eventually come around and buy their products over and over again. And it's just that Apple keeps improving their iOS features. So if we take a look at some of the new iOS features for 15, which is the new one coming out, they just have increasingly cooler and more efficient ways to live your life. SharePlay, Apple Music, FaceTime, which is almost kind of like zoom at this point where you can basically almost have a zoom like meeting which is kind of insane apple tv and so on these are just different ways to kind of suck in customers over the long term even if it takes five to six seven years to convert them and when I look at Apple, I don't think of it as a phone business. I think of it as an overall service to better elevate your experience. And I think that it has way more to that that I can't even explain everything. But overall, what I love to see from a company is the reoccurring people and the growing and stickiness of a business. So just having people coming back and buying more and more products over time, building that ecosystem, reaching out, okay, yes, I have an iPhone. Okay, now I'm going to get an Apple watch to match with it. Okay, yeah, I need some data. So I'm going to buy some of the Apple storage and so on. And this is just a way for more and more people to flock and spend even more and more money to buy Apple products. And honestly, this is exactly what we love to see as an investor. And on top of that, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, so this could probably be wrong, but I honestly think that it's 100% true. More and more people are becoming Apple users than people are leaving the Apple ecosystem. And that just has to be a guaranteed fact because of the stickiness of the Apple business model. And here's the thing, of course, the iPhone products and other accessories are probably not as innovative as they used to be back in the day. But to be honest, they're innovating in a bunch of different areas as well. For example, things like virtual reality, the Apple car. If that becomes a thing, Apple is not only just a phone company, but they are a damn car company as well, which is insane. Rumors are they're supposed to be autonomous and all EV, which would be greatly insane. I'm not too much into that space other than Tesla, so I don't really know too much. And this would also be a competitor to one of my other holdings, Tesla. So it could be a conflict of interest, but either way, I'm excited for Apple because of the innovation that they are doing. Another thing that they're looking into is robots. So overall, you can see that these are a bunch of different ideas and different things that Apple could innovate on and grow their company as a whole, which is just completely insane and this is what you're looking for in a company and i keep saying that because apple is one of my biggest holdings and i love having apple because it has so much potential and so much cash flow and i'm getting rewarded by holding it by getting a dividend and reaping in on all the benefits as far as apple being overvalued or undervalued in my opinion i think that apple is still going to grow long term indefinitely i think that they have so much more potential ahead of them whether or not you buy today at 150 145 or 160 i definitely believe in the future it's going to be triple that in maybe five ten years who knows to be honest i get that article that was talking about the law of diminishing returns and of course i had the counterpoint of it just being about the iphone products but at the end of the day yes apple had a huge run-up but I still think it's a great company with tons of cash on hand, ways to reward their investors through dividends and buybacks. So overall, I definitely think that Apple is a great and easy place to put your money. And to be honest, yes, people use it as a cash park. Yes, it pays out a dividend. And yes, it has great capital appreciation. So these are all different reasons why I am investing in Apple. And as you guys can see over here, Apple is my third largest holding in my dividend portfolio. Technically, it should be all about the same with Microsoft and VGT, which by the way, VGT has a huge holding in Apple anyways. But as you guys can see, it's only a few dollar amount difference. So with that being said, it still is my biggest holding. I also have some Apple shares elsewhere. I wish I had more shares, but I've been growing this account for a past about a year now. And in the past year, it's been great. I started off with almost a $96 cost basis. And since then, it's went up $117 as my average price. But I can't complain because I'm up 24%. And again, it's not all about numbers. I'm holding this basically until I die and passing it on. But I'm trying to reap the benefits of growing my yield on costs over time and also getting a lot of different capital appreciation and other benefits from holding Apple. I think it's a great company, but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know if you guys are investing into Apple, if you guys think it's overvalued or undervalued. Personally, like I said before, I don't care what the valuation is right now because I think this is such a great company to have. So again, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. And if you guys want an even more in-depth video, let me know. I try to make it very easy so all the new investors 
can kind of get into the habit of learning more about these companies because I don't want to make it overly complicated with financials and all that. But anyways, I appreciate you guys for watching my videos and guys remember everybody eats.